So I guess I could describe myself as a nerd who develops like uh, Linux distributions and writes shells and writes uh, Linux shell scripts. Uh, so I'm Parul Bali, uh, Rudra Saraswat's mother. Uh, he's a speaker here at India Force 2.0. So I'm here with him. So yeah, when he was young. Um, I introduced him to the computer like any parent would, you know, uh, they should know a little bit of everything. Uh, so apart from other activities like, you know, he plays the tabla, he goes for tennis. So apart from that, I thought he should know a little bit of computer also. So just got him introduced to that. And, uh, you know, I used to uh, uh, give him access to some uh, interesting uh, websites where he could do interesting things, you know, using the computer basically to introduce him to logic and um, so he got so interested in it uh, that uh, he started you know using it a lot and i wanted to reduce his screen time so i started you know uh, uh, enrolling him into other activities so as to reduce the screen time but he was you know very passionate about it and uh, then he found some resources on Android development in Java and stuff like that and started, you know, um, making small little apps for Android. And then he said, Mama, I want to publish this to Play Stores. So, um, you know, I used to keep an eye on what he's doing. But uh, yeah, so that's how he really got interested in programming. And then um, uh, he used to use my old laptop, which did not have very good specs. And he was finding it difficult to compile programs on that laptop. And then um, he, you know, uh, looked for solutions on the internet. Uh, I'm a Windows user, hardcore Windows user, never used Linux before. And he used to, he, I saw him, you know, installing all sorts of things. And I was scared that he would spoil the system, and uh, so, but he was adamant on doing it. So I thought, okay, it's anyway an old laptop, doesn't matter even if it gets spoiled. So that's how, you know, by tinkering and experimenting, he uh, stumbled upon Linux, I think. You know, uh, I, I'm happy that he's been able to maintain a balance between schoolwork, studies and this. Schoolwork is prominently because, uh, you know, I always used to insist that after your schoolwork, you can do whatever you want to do. But the way he used, you know, that minimal time he got with the computer, the way he used it. And I used to, I saw, uh, you know, when he used to uh, write on those Ubuntu discourse, there is something called Ubuntu discourse. He used to write there and, you know, suggest ideas and people responding to it. Uh, that's when I realized that, okay, he's, do, uh, you know, he's doing something meaningful. And uh, I started believing in him. <laughs> and then two years earlier, he made uh, a, a few days before the exam, he said, Mama, I, uh, I'm on the brink of doing something and I want uh, some more free time, you know, to be able to complete this project. And it's really cool. It's going to be very cool. I said, OK, you take your two, three hours. He anyway has two, three hours of screen time daily. Um, I said, okay, do it, but after that you have to study. And in those two hours, he released the first beta of Ubuntu Unity. And just two days later, it got featured on Forbes. You know, when the first article on Forbes in Forbes came out, he was complaining to me that, Mama, I could have done this lot earlier. But because, you know, the school used to send me to all these competitions, I did not get the time. So that's when, you know, I felt a little guilty. And after that, I did not insist on, you know, um, on him taking all these IO and IMO exams, uh, you know, the uh, Olympiads. So, and uh, I told him that, okay, uh, it's just studies and your projects. I think he's the happiest when he's uh, talking to his community folks uh, because he goes for a number of activities, but I've seen him the happiest when he's in front of the computer or when he's watching Linus Tech Tips and all those, uh, you know, tech channels or reading about tech stuff. Like earlier, he used to read so much about Harry Potter and all that, all those novels he used to read. But now he's so interested in, you know, reading about tech stuff and being with those people, interacting with those people who are involved in tech. I see him the happiest at that time. 
I think we should let the kids be and do what they, you know, what they want to do, what they're interested in really. Uh, because I know I felt very guilty, you know, when he told me that he could have done these things a little earlier also. So that day I realized and, you know, I told him that, okay, uh, besides studies, whatever you want to do, you are on your, uh, you know, you are free to do. And um, so I think we should let kids uh, decide what they want to do and uh, not force them, you know, really. Uh, like now also when I see him, you know, every other day he comes up with new ideas. He wants to do, build something new. Mama, I've thought of this, I want to do this. Every other day. And he has so many projects and he wants to build more. Then I ask him, where is the time? Will you be able to manage it? Why don't you just focus on the ones you've already developed? He says, no, Mama, this is going to be even better. This is going to help in a very big way. It's going to help the community in a big way and they're going to love it. So then I think, okay, it's his life, whatever he wants to do. But that kind of understanding came after, you know, a while after I saw all those articles and, you know, or him getting all this attention. So I think beforehand, if parents understand what their kids love, I think it would be better. Uh, just uh, just uh, open source software and uh, and understand why uh, people uh, support the idea of open source software and that proprietary software and that proprietary software isn't always better than open source software. Like in the case of Photoshop and Jim, I understand that uh, there are many people who feel that Photoshop uh, has way more features than Jim, uh, or the Jim is uh, pretty close to Photoshop in terms of features. But there are many people who are familiar with uh, who are way more familiar with Photoshop compared to Jim. So I'm just, uh, uh, despite uh, them having almost, uh, despite most of the features being uh, uh, being present in both of them, most of the features are present in both of them. But since people are more familiar with Photoshop, for example, uh, yeah, not many people use Chimp. Even open source uh, designers, like one of our designers, actually used to use Photoshop, and I got to know, I got to know later. So yeah, uh, it would be great if people started using uh, open source software and trying it. But the problem is most people around uh, simply don't know anything about open source. Most of the people, uh, I mean, not in this talk, but uh, like in the school, uh, in my school, uh, pretty much, I mean, very few people know about open source. Uh, so like what I have uh, told many people uh, about open source software, uh, and like I even saw Linux on a few of the school's computers, which are extremely slow. Yeah, they actually made me deinstall Windows on it. and. Yeah, so uh, they simply aren't interested in open source software, even though they, even though they use it every day. Uh, yeah, I would love to see it. I would love to see more people using open source software and the community growing. Uh, because currently, uh, like this was one of the few communities I found which actually use open source software. The fact that number one, uh, I'm not the only developer who's developing these projects. So there are many people who contribute to them every day. So it's not, and then we have designers and many other people too. So it's not like I'm just developing the projects and then, and no one's giving any feedback. Uh, people are contributing to them. They're giving feedback in uh, the in the Telegram groups, Discord servers, and everywhere else. So that's one of the things I like about uh, about open source. I think Kid in Life, for example, because it's a pretty good video editor. Uh, or yeah, Kid in Life, because uh, like I used to use it for editing videos. Like in my previous school, so they would uh, request me to edit videos. Uh, and yeah, I would mostly edit them in Kid in Life, and and it's and it's very feature rich, even compared to uh, professional uh, video editors like uh, Premiere Pro and others. And it's completely uh, open source, and it's not proprietary. So yeah, I would say Kid in Life. So it's great to see that this is one such community where uh, most of the people are using Linux and know what open source is for change. So uh, where's there, it was basically like we are developing open software, uh, blah, 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 and they didn't know anything about open source apart from that. So yeah, it's great to see uh, that the community is so big here. Uh, and I would love to see the community growing in future, especially in India. I was uh, shivering a little in the beginning, nervous a lot, uh, because this is his first offline event. Online, he has given a number of events, uh, but offline, this was his first one, so I was really nervous. He wasn't at all. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, uh, I think I felt very proud, very proud. And I'm sure he is also very happy being here. He doesn't want to leave before this, uh, you know, all the sessions end. 
So I'm I'm sure he's very happy being here. And congratulations to uh, India Force for conducting the event in a very uh, brilliant manner.